Hi, I'm Pooja. I'm a watercolor artist, a surface designer, and an online educator. Through my various teaching sources such as Skillshare, Instagram, and YouTube, I teach watercolors to all those who wish to learn from my watercolor techniques, especially the way I paint florals. Today's tutorial is brought to you in collaboration with Phila Group of Art Supplies. I'm so excited to teach you to paint tulips in the most simplified way using watercolors. Before we begin painting, let's quickly look at all the art supplies that we will be needing today. For watercolor paints, I'm using the Daler Rowney Aquafine Watercolor Studio Set which comes in the form of 48 half pans. It has removable trays giving you extra room to mix your paints. The set also comes with a size 4 round brush. You can visit the Taylor Rowney website to download the entire color chart of this half pan set. Today we will be using a few shades of yellow, some indigo, a couple of greens and a couple of pinks to paint the tulips. I have made some swatch cards which you can see here. So we are not going to use too many colors but a basic few shades to paint the tulips. Now let's move on to paper. I will be using the Canson Montual watercolor paper in the form of a pad that is glued on one side. This paper is 300 GSM cold pressed. It is acid free and has a lovely texture which is perfect for watercolors. Let's take a closer look at the paper. You can choose to use this paper in various packaging formats such as sheets, rolls, blocks, pads, spiral pads and books. To mix my paints, I will be using some ceramic paint mixing palettes. I have a couple of these to make sure that my paints don't mix into each other. For brushes, I will be using my Princeton brushes in Heritage and Velvetage series. I will be using the size 4 round brushes to paint the tulips and stems and a small size round brush to paint details. I'm also keeping a size 6 round brush handy just in case if I need it. You will also need 2 cups of clean water to rinse your greens and pinks separately. You will also need a paper towel to dab your brushes and take off excess water after rinsing. Let's take a quick look at some tulips that I've painted as samples on the same paper. As you can see, I've painted a couple of pink tulips and a couple of yellow ones. We are going to do some color mixing to achieve nice color gradation on the petals. As we paint along, I will share the names of the paints that I'm mixing. Let's begin by painting a light shade of yellow. I'm going to use my size 4 round brush and mix some lemon yellow onto my palette. I'm going to dilute this lemon yellow a lot by adding lots of water to it. We want the paint to be runny and flowy. So make sure you dilute that color with lots of water. This is going to be the light base of the yellow tulip. Into lemon yellow, I'm also adding a bit of cadmium yellow. I don't want the base to be too bright but a soft shade of yellow. So this is something we need as the base color. Now let's paint a shade of green. I'm going to mix a bit of leaf green into lemon yellow. I'm going to make sure that this green color is also very runny so that it can glide smoothly onto paper. Mixing your paints ahead of time can really help you in achieving that impromptu blending of colors. To this mixture, I'm also adding a bit of sap green to have a really natural looking green. Sometimes your greens can look really artificial and bright. So to mute them down, you can either use your sap green, which is always a slightly more natural, organic and a muted shade of green. Or you can also mix a bit of yellow ochre. 
So this is pretty much the shade of green that we will be using to paint the stems. Now let's proceed to mix a slightly darker shade of green in which I'm also going to add a bit of indigo. So I'm using the leaf green which I mixed earlier, the same shade of green to which I'm going to add just a small amount of indigo. I'm also adding a bit of sap green to keep it a bit muted so that's some indigo that I added to the two greens and this is a darker shade of green that we will be using along with the earlier shade of green now we are going to paint our tulips starting from the center of the page we will roughly paint about three tulips maybe two pinks and a yellow one in the center using the previously mixed yellow paint and my size 4 round brush I'm going to start painting my tulip that's going to be in the center of the page. So start by making a rough oval shape like an egg or like a glass of wine. So that's the shape we are trying to paint here with a very narrow opening on the top. And then I'm going to make these small petal like edges on the top which resemble the various petals of the tulips that are closed in I'm using a very soft hand to paint these details I'm not going to worry too much about getting it right or making it look realistic we really want to paint these tulips in a loose style so using water I'm making sure to spread the shade of lemon yellow onto the base so that's the head of the tulip with small details to show the petals on the top and I also left a small highlight on the petals in the form of a white cap now I'm using Indian yellow which is a really nice warm shade of yellow and using a moist brush I'm going to load that paint directly onto the top of the petals and because the layer underneath is still wet the lemon yellow and the Indian yellow will instantly bleed into each other if you think your base layer has dried up a bit, don't worry, you can just wet your brush a bit and glide it smoothly on the sides and paint the colors into each other. You can just pull them down a bit so that they start blending naturally. The overall look of this tulip is going to be very soft and light, so make sure that you don't add too much of the Indian yellow. I'm just taking a bit of more color and adding it on the top so it organically bleeds into the base layer. Make sure that your brush is nicely wet. At the same time we don't want it to be dripping wet but it should be moist at all times so that it can move freely and you don't get those dry brush strokes keep blending till you feel good about the color mixing okay so that's pretty much how I want my yellow tulip to look like I have a soft I have a soft blend of light yellow and dark yellow over there and then I'm going to clean my brush and load it with a lighter shade of green that we mixed earlier to paint stems and leaves. Using the same size 4 round brush, I'm gently going to pull a stem down from the base of the tulip head. Just glide your brush smoothly and make sure your wrist moves along the line. So that's the stem. Make sure the stem is not too short 
otherwise you won't be able to fit in the long leaves of the tulips so make sure you start out with a long stem now I want the stem to bleed into the yellow head of the tulip so I'm just going to make sure that the green blends into the yellow just a bit so I'm going to wet my brush again and help the green blend into the yellow something like this now using a darker shade of green I'm just going to draw a slight outline on the left side of the stem just to show some depth and then I'm going to blend the light green into the dark green I'm just going to do that with a clean moist brush but don't stress too much about this you want the stems to look natural okay now I want to add another tulip on the left and the right side so let's begin with the tulip on the left hand side first for that I'm going to mix a very soft shade of pink and for that I'm going to use permanent rose from my Taylor Rowney half pan set it's a beautiful shade of pink which I'm going to dilute a lot to use as the base color so I'm adding lots of water as you can see and making sure that the base color is extremely light I'm also adding a bit of lemon yellow to my pink to have that corally peachy touch to it All right, so using the same size four round brush, I'm going to draw a similar shape, just like the previous tulip, like an egg or a wine glass. So I'm just drawing two petals that are overlapped. Take your time to get the shape right. Make sure the base of the tulip head is slightly broader and not too thin. There are a variety of tulips that you will see on the internet if you try to look for some pictures. But um, here we are going to paint the tulips in the simplest way possible. So we chose this shape. Now using the darker mix of permanent rose, I'm going to paint the top edges of the petals and pull down the color just a bit so that it bleeds beautifully into the base color. I really like this pop of color and the way it's blending into the base layer. Now with a clean moist brush, I'm going to just blend everything nicely. Make sure you glide your brush smoothly. Keep your hand loose and try not to press the bristles too much into the paper. You can achieve this by holding the brush a bit at the back and help the colors move. Keep blending the colors till you feel it looks right. Okay, now I'm going to rinse my brush and load it into the lighter mix of green and draw a stem that's a bit curved and just pull it down ever so lightly. I'm going to allow the green to blend into the petals a bit.
so these are our two tulips in place okay now let's paint the tulip on the right hand side I'm going to paint it slightly below the yellow tulip and tilting on the right hand side so I'm going to use the same shade of pink the base color and I'm going to draw an oval shape resembling an egg so we are going to follow the exact same steps that we used earlier to paint the first pink tulip you can just change the way the petals overlap onto each other and leave a soft highlight between the two petals and fill up the base layer with a lighter shade of pink I'm still using my size 4 round brush and once you're okay with the basic shape of the tulip you can start adding a darker mix of pink I'm just going to add it a bit on the top and it instantly starts flowing down into the wet layer I love the way this one is blending so I'm not going to do too much here now I'm also going to add a bit of crimson on top of permanent rose to really give it like a dark look on the top so that's a bit of crimson that's blending into permanent rose I'm just going to blend all the colors nicely now using a clean moist brush I'm going to draw a stem to this tulip as well a bit more curved I'm letting the green blend I'm just adding a bit of yellow on the bottom portion of the tulips just to show a slight color variation from the previous pink tulip and now I'm going to switch to my size 4 brush from the heritage series and I'm going to use that brush to draw the leaves now we will start painting the leaves from the base of the stems so we will draw a couple of leaves that are coming out from each of the stems make sure your leaves are thick and hold your brush a bit in perpendicular direction so that you can move it smoothly onto the paper so that's the first leaf and I'm filling it up with the same shade of green that we mixed earlier the lighter mix and then I'm going to load my brush into the darker mix of green and just dab it a bit on the top okay and I'm going to just place the darker mix of green on one side of the leaf and let it blend the next leaf I want to draw a bit more vertically between the two tulips so I'm just going to draw a leaf roughly in the center and I'm going to let it overlap the stem and I'm going to fill it up with the lighter shade of green and then add a darker mix of green on the top the two greens will instantly blend into each other creating a beautiful effect we want to make sure that all the leaves look a bit different we want a few darker ones and a few lighter ones 
so those are our two leaves in place now because the first two leaves are in the same direction I want to draw a leaf now that is curving out towards the left so that's our third leaf I'm going to add a bit of dark green near the top and also along the sides and just pull it down a bit now let's paint an overlapping leaf which is behind the stem and also the leaves that we painted earlier so it's a leaf that is behind the front leaves so I'm just going to paint it in the white gaps that I see around the two stems okay so that's my overlapping leaf and that's pretty much about it I quite like how the simple piece turned out I hope you were able to paint along with me thank you so much for watching this tutorial today lastly be sure to follow me on my Instagram account by the lakeside for watercolor tips and other updates about my products and classes.